Hello guys, Chris here and welcome back to another video. It is one, my friends. I'm going to be testing GTA 5, the best game on earth because of the beautiful boy Jack, of course, <laughs> in the minimum and recommended system requirements of the game. I just got the Q6600, which is part of the minimum requirements, and it was the last piece of the puzzle. We are finally able to do this, my friends. So let's get into the minimum requirements now, shall we? So for the minimum recs, it asks for an Intel Core 2 Quad CPU Q6600, so 2.4 gigahertz quad core CPU from 2007, 4 gigabytes of RAM, it's DDR2 to go with the Core 2 Quad CPU, and I am running dual channel, 2x2 two two gigs of DDR2 at 800 megahertz, and I believe we will actually need to increase the size of the RAM, because, well, uh, with 4 gigabytes, at least lately, I have been noticing that GTA 5 doesn't really run all that well, but we'll see, of course. Let's move on. For the graphics card, it asks for an NVIDIA GeForce 9800 GT 1 gigabyte GPU, and that's exactly what we got here with the ASUS top model of the card. This one released back in 2008. And yeah, that's it for the minimum requirements. Let's take a look now at the recommended stuff, shall we? Double shall we in this video. It's, it's amazing. The recommended CPU is an Intel Core i5 3470 CPU. I just bought this one for 12 euros for this video. This is a quad core with four threads, just like the Core 2 Quad actually, but it's a much faster quad core. It's from the Ivy Bridge architecture, it released back in 2012, and it's really adequate for GTA 5 because this game doesn't really utilize more than four cores and four threads efficiently. Then we got 8 gigabytes of RAM, we're running that in dual channel, 1600 megahertz, and for the graphics card, we got the Nvidia GeForce GTX 662 gigabyte model, it released back in 2012. That's enough of the intro let's get right into the games now triple shall we shall we <laughs> all right let's go for the settings first we're playing in DirectX 10 using the 720p resolution and you guessed it the lowest settings because this is after all minimum requirements right advanced settings are all turned off we're actually below the VRAM requirements apparently going through that graph over there and it seems like okay it is it is not terrible, actually. I guess these could very well be accurate minimum requirements. It's not really 30 FPS all of the time. Damn it, that is so terrible. That is the worst thing ever. That's actually what I expected coming into this because of the four gigabytes of RAM. Uh, yeah, this game, I don't know why it asks for four gigabytes of RAM as a minimum requirement because uh, it will stutter like hell. And I have installed this on an SSD. If you have a hard drive coupled with four gigs of RAM in this game, it will run like crap, basically. It's going to be like that, the stuttery mess, but all of the time, okay? <laughs> the SSD kind of offsets it a little bit here and it makes it a little bit more playable, you know, I guess... 80% of the time it's it's playable-ish. Oh god, those textures. It's not supposed to look like this. Oh boy. Okay. This is now a CPU uh, bottleneck issue, actually. Because <laughs> our CPU is bottlenecking the 9800 GT, for sure. <sighs> I've had worse, to be honest. Uh, but I expected a little bit better, because these are minimum requirements after all. But... To uh, make it a little bit more playable, what you should do is uh, leave the V-Sync option on half. It actually comes uh, on half by default, and I'll apply it. And what it does is it locks the FPS to 30, and it makes it so the CPU usage isn't pegged at 100% at all times. Although it still is, for some reason. I expected it to drop a little bit, maybe it did to 95%, okay, 87% there. It's not as intensive as you can see, but I still expected way better, guys. And you know, to be honest with you, it is kind of playable. I am playing the game still, and if you lock the FPS to 30, you shouldn't really see those issues with the textures disappearing and stuff like that. And you can still see Jack. I think, yes, you can. Hello, Jack, how's it going? I knew you'd be here because you love minimum requirements of games, don't you? Oh, yes, you do. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. He's fine, guys. Just taking a nap, see? He's completely fine. Uh, yeah, I guess CPU usage is indeed way lower now. And inside of bushes, the GPU doesn't really max out. And Okay, sometimes it does and it drops to like the mid-20s, lower 20s. Let's go, Chris. We can do this. Yes. Damn it. 
Ah, this car is actually too fat, you know, that's that's why I keep crashing into things. Uh, but anyway, it's right around 30 FPS. I think it's it's locked at 30 most of the time, unless you go into bushes. Oh, so things still disappear. <laughs> what about 800 by 600 then? You know, I can play the game like this. Yes, there are visual bugs and everything else, but uh, it's not the end of the world. If you are desperate to play GTA 5, you could do so. It's 30 FPS. It's probably better than a, uh, an Xbox 360 or a PS3 version of the game, you know? So yeah, there's that. Maybe it isn't better because things are still really weird sometimes. If you lock it to 25 or if you have 8 gigabytes of RAM instead of 4, you will actually be able to play this game at uh, 30 FPS locked absolutely fine, okay? Without those issues. But hey, as it stands, well, it is barely playable, and I guess that is what minimum requirements are there for. Alright, GTA Online is way more CPU intensive than single player, and it shows right here, because we're not even in an intensive area, and it's already dropping way too much. Even though the CPU usage for some reason is not at 100% packed all of the time right now, probably because we're not driving a car really fast, uh, the, the cores that it's utilizing, they're not fast enough to, to play this game properly. Although it's not really stuttering by all that much and it could be considered a cinematic experience. Online is just not for minimum requirements, for sure. <laughs> you should avoid this. Like, the G100 actually got around 18 FPS average in single player, so this is now a G100 um, experience, basically. Really terrible one. I'm surprised that it doesn't stutter, however, but uh, yeah, you, you should you should avoid this. All right, it's recommended requirements time. We're playing using DirectX 11, 1080p resolution, and the high settings. We're just barely under the VRAM limitations there, which is great. Let's do this. Oh yes, it is so much better. CPU usage is still at 100%, which worries me a little bit, honestly, guys. Maybe we're gonna see some texture popping, playing at high speeds, you know, driving at high speeds. Anyway, I gotta say that the experience is just so much better and it looks incredibly good right now compared to what it did previously. It's great that the game can look that bad, you know, like in the minimum requirements, because that means that a lot of systems can actually play it. But uh, yeah, it, this is just a completely different game almost at this point, right? Wow, amazing stuff, and it's getting 70s, it's so smooth, doesn't stutter whatsoever, by the way. Let's try to drive really fast now, that was close. <laughs> uh, okay, 70s, 80s, that's insane, guys. That's just, I actually thought it would run worse than it is. So, for the recommended requirements of this game, they actually aimed for a 60 plus FPS experience almost all of the time and 1080p high settings, apparently. And it's really impressive that an i5 third gen from 10 years ago can still play this game absolutely fun. Well, the game actually came out on PC in 2015, so it's not really that impressive. Back then, in 2015, all you needed was a quad core and 8 gigs of RAM, and you could play pretty much everything everything out there with this GPU of course and it shows right here it's a triple-a title with a huge open world and it's running buttery smooth guys like 56 fps 1% lows is actually amazing for something like this and even though the CPU usage is maxed out sometimes especially while driving really fast it doesn't really matter because it's not stuttery at all and textures don't disappear it's just Buttery smooth, it's amazing. Hello, Jack, how's it going? I didn't know that you also enjoyed some recommended requirements as well. That's oh, so purpose. sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I do this on purpose. You guys can tell probably, right? <laughs> but he's fine, guys, he's fine. I love you too, see? He still says he loves us, so everything is fine. Also, did it drop from 60 FPS? I didn't really feel it dropping, because I was focusing on Jack, of course. But uh, yes, inside of bushes, it does drop a little bit, but only to like the mid 50s, lower 50s at times. Goodbye, Bob! Now I will make sure that you are dead, okay? And to send you to hell, I will actually set you on fire, okay? Because that's where you belong. All right, damn bastard. Okay, let's go. Can you 
Michael, please, can you shoot the... Okay, the oil, look at that. Look at that burnt Bob. We can eat him now. <laughs> no, this is not the forest. Okay, let's go. Let's get out of here. Oh boy, it's really hot here today, my friends. And I was wondering why, because it's 23 degrees Celsius outside. So it's not a hot day by any means here in Portugal. I've had much worse, but then I looked at my right. Both the GPU and the CPU <laughs> are blowing hot hair towards me. So that's that's definitely why it's so hot right now. Uh, well, let's get to the game now. Finally, we're in online. It's getting really good FPS. It's kind of the same as we were seeing previously. Can you get out of here, please? Buddy, buddy, you have more than enough space. Are you serious? And once again, you can see that the CPU utilization is definitely not maxed out compared to the single player. Could it be the area where we are playing the game at? I, I don't know, like th this is weird, because online is more CPU intensive. Oh, come on, it still has some copyrighted music, are you kidding me? Okay, let's drive fast, all right, CPU usage is going up. Shut up, shut up, I don't care, let's go. <laughs> all right, it's dropping from 60 FPS in this area now, we're not in Jack's Hill or anything like that, so uh, this is now a little bit more CPU intensive and uh, it shows because GPU usage is not maxed out anymore. But it's still a really solid experience, guys. I can't... Like, this is great, you know? I, I wouldn't really complain about this because this game has received a ton of updates, especially in online. And uh, a lot of people complain of poor performance in this game mode. But, well, with 10-year-old components, because the GPU and the CPU are 10 years old at this point and 8 gigs of RAM, a measly 8 gigs of RAM. I'm not sure if measly is the right word. You can play the game absolutely fine, around 60 FPS on average, actually above 60 FPS on average. That's very impressive. Over in this area, around Jack's Hill, we should get GPU bound once again. And that is the case, 97 GPU usage. Previously in single player, the most intensive areas were bushy areas because we were GPU bound. And in the multiplayer, since we are CPU bound, we get around the same FPS everywhere. Sometimes it gets above 60, sometimes it gets slightly below it, but it's extremely consistent still. Unfortunately, in online, we don't have a Bob to kill and we don't have a Jack to appreciate. So I will end this in a sad note. All right. <laughs> Also, guys, keep in mind that the FPS that we're seeing here today in this particular server of GTA Online are not the same as in other servers, because it all depends on how many people are running around, killing each other, you know, if you get into a lobby without anybody, you will see more FPS, and if you get in a lobby with like 20 people or more, I don't even know if you can actually get into a lobby with more than 20 people, but that's another story, well, it will get less FPS, of course, but it should always be a pretty stable and playable experience most of the time, unless you get into like the casino areas and stuff like that. All right, thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments below what games you would like me to test next with minimum and recommended requirements. Keep in mind, I don't really have all of the components, so I'll probably need to buy some. Um, so it will take a little longer than the normal videos. But yeah, I'll try to meet your requests as best as I can. Love you all. Bye-bye.